Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. It's a beautiful day here in Johnson City. It's warm. It's like, I don't know, 70 degrees is what my car said. I'm thinking it's a little colder than that, but it felt like it was 85 today. It was beautiful. And I am here with my new friend, Callie Fulton with Renourished Co. Company, short for company. (laughs) She is a dietitian, nutritionist, Mm -hmm. um, just an awesome young lady that you're going to enjoy getting to know. So welcome to the podcast, Callie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Did you enjoy the 70 degree day today? I did. It was I was nice. inside for too much of it, but. It was kind of crazy. This morning, I thought our building was going to get blown off of where it is on the hill, Keller Williams. <laughs> it, it just was crazy. And then and now it's sunny and 70. So uh-huh. welcome to East Tennessee, right? That That's accurate. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. You're a big fan of the podcast. You know what's mm-hmm. coming. Yep. What's your favorite thing about Johnson City? I've been giving this thought because I knew it was coming. Um, there's so many things, but my number one is definitely the mountains. Number one's the mountains. I actually grew up in Anchorage, Alaska. What? And so I have determined that I can't live anywhere that doesn't at least have some mountains. They're not quite the same, but. <laughs> I was going to say, yours are a little different. How do our mountains compare to Anchorage mountains? They're, you know, just shorter and more, more rolling hills than, than big mountains, but they're so beautiful. I, I love it here. So, All right. So how in the world did you get from Anchorage to, I don't know, 3,000 miles away to Little Johnson City, Tennessee? That's always the question. And yeah. I, I typically tell people on an airplane. <laughs> that's a good answer. Uh-huh. I thought it was maybe like a boat and a car, but that's cool. <laughs> No, but you will this fast I, uh, way. I left for college when I was 18, went to East Carolina University yeah. in North Carolina, yeah. um, made my way up to Delaware for grad school. Okay. For, who knows Where'd you get your undergrad like, degree in? Um, it's in nutrition and dietetics. Nice. Yes. Um, so went, went and got a master's degree up in Delaware in health promotion and found my way back to Asheville. Okay. And then found my way to Johnson City when I was looking for a job. So um, moved up here for almost five years ago and don't really want to leave ever. No. So. Yeah. You got a family here? <laughs> I have a husband. No kids yet. Um, What's our your family, husband's name? Let's give him a shout out. His name is Lucas. <laughs> Lucas. Hey, Lucas. <laughs> He's That's a good cool. one. We what met, does he do? We met in Nashville and moved up here together. So Nice. He is is a construction project manager. So he builds houses. Oh, I like Lucas already. Yep. <laughs> Lucas and I need to hang out. <laughs> Probably. Yes. Yes. All right. So did you grow up going, I want to be a dietitian. I want to learn about nutrition. So how do we get that passion? Actually a story I love to tell because it's kind of funny. In the eighth grade, my school did this thing called the passion project. And it was this big thing. They literally moved our classes around. So we had all our classes with the same people. We had to do a big, long project, write a paper, presentation, all this stuff. And at the time, I was really interested in cooking. I actually got a KitchenAid mixer for my 12th birthday. Uh, Awesome. (laughs) Those are the best mixers. Yes. Um, But it was determined that, like, there maybe wasn't enough science behind that to make a whole paper project about it. And so I ended up doing it on nutrition And it's just a funny story because the whole point of the project actually worked. Um, And so nutrition truly is my passion. I absolutely love it. How cool is that? Look at that. (laughs) Teachers inspiring young (laughs) young students and helping them figure out what they want to do forever. They knew what they were doing, I guess. That's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. And then so you just carried that on through high school and then you're like, I'm going to specifically pick Eastern Carolina to go to. Yeah. Yeah. So it just, the way nutrition interacts with our body and how it affects, you know, how you feel your health long-term, all of that is just, I don't know why it would, was so interesting to me, even as, you know, a high schooler and going into college, that was 
my first major I went into to do and never changed my mind. I, yeah, that's I great. I like it. So. <laughs> well, tell us about Renourished Company. Yes. So Renourished Co. was born about two and a half years ago. Okay. Um, We're in the toddler stage. Yes. Still, still pretty little, but um, it's a vir my virtual practice, so everything is online. And really, the difference between you know going to your doctor or what I did previously, which was work in a hospital, is that I actually get to sit down and spend time with people and talk to them about you know their diet, their lifestyle, everything they're doing throughout their day and how it is affecting them instead of, you know, the five minutes, give them a pill, whatever it is. Or give them um, advice and hope they take it and move on. Yes. Or right. tell them, you know, here's a meal plan, go. Because um, we know that that really doesn't work. If it worked, we wouldn't have any problems. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's weird how we don't follow the meal plans. Like, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I still get asked for them. I don't find them an effective tool. Gotcha. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah, and so you are you don't have any overhead because you're just online. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and so like, <laughs> let's talk about what a typical client would look like. So I do a lot of work with gut health, hormones, and skin issues. So a lot of my clients come into me having been either diagnosed with IBS before but not really given any strategies to help with it, mm -hmm. um, or they've been, you know, diagnosed with PCOS and have issues with weight gain or what is PCOS? Acne. So PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Gotcha. It is um, obviously only affects women, but it causes things like um, hyperandrogenism, which is like high testosterone mm -hmm. in women. Um, so they're you know growing hair where they don't want to on their face losing hair on their head it causes weight gain causes infertility um, so a lot of issues there with women trying to get pregnant and they've got you know irregular cycles so really helping balance out those hormones without things like birth control because right. if you're trying to get pregnant that's not going to work right that is kind of hindering it i think um, so Really, there's there's a lot that we can do. A lot of stuff roots in gut health, yeah. and so I do testing. I look at what is going on in your gut. Is there a parasite? Is there just imbalances of good and bad gut bacteria? Um, let's let's pretend I'm a client for you. Yeah, Obviously, I'm yeah. not a woman with <laughs> PCOS, but um, yeah, like what would be the step one? Do we do blood testing to like look at what I'm I've got? Yeah, I'll just let you go. Yeah, yeah. So typically if you're coming in, and I do work with men, they're just it's less common seeking out help from me, but I do have We I like do work our with ribs and burgers, and we don't want anybody yeah, to tell us we can't eat that. That's so that's I think that's true. the main fear. Like, I just want a burger and a beer for every meal, <laughs> and you're going to fries. Yeah, you know. That's probably not the healthiest There's thing There's a time and a place for it. <laughs> Mitch and I would love to eat that every day, right, Mitch? <laughs> every day, so... You, you you could. Okay. Might not turn out too good for <laughs> yeah. me. But as you're coming in as a new client for me, yes, we're doing testing. So I can do blood lab testing. We'll do typically gut testing. I also do um, hair mineral testing. So looking at more so an average of the last three months. So when you're looking at blood testing, that's really like that point in time right then. Okay. Um, the hair testing gives me kind of a wider picture of what your mineral stores in your body looks like. It's like by taking hair samples, yes. sending them off, yep. and you get a three-month history of what, mm -hmm. how many burgers I eat. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Gotcha. That's pretty scary because <laughs> uh -huh. you're going to find a lot in there. Yeah. Um, and then we just kind of go do you do the gut from testing? there. So that is a stool test. Okay. Just how you think you do it. Um, but it is sent to your house. You send it to the lab. I do nothing with it. It doesn't come to me. Smart. I wouldn't <laughs> want to do anything with it either. No. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So that's our baseline. We've got blood, all the stuff. Yes. And then you look at me and you go, man. You're a mess. And how, are we, how do we get it straightened out? Kind of, sort of, yeah. So the way I'm looking at those labs is a little different, too. So um, I like to tell people, I feel like symptoms are signals that okay. something is off. Mm -hmm. So instead of waiting till those labs show, you know, you have diabetes, you're to a point where you are diagnosed with a, a disease and you need medication, you need medical intervention, 
we're we're trying to find things before that. Okay. And so I'm looking at, you know, an assessment of your symptoms, of your lifestyle, of your diet, in conjunction with those labs and figuring out where can we get you to optimal and where you're not breaking out with acne, where you're not, you know, having this crazy bloating after every right. meal. Yeah. Figuring out, you know, how can we intervene now before it does get to that point where you need medication every day for the rest of your life? Um, so that's really... So you're trying to catch it ahead of time. Yeah. That's yeah. great. And get you feeling good every day instead of... Yeah. I think there are a lot of days, I think a lot of people just feel like garbage. Yeah. And, what, and you think yeah. mainly that's because of what we put in, right? <sighs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Or, or the lack of what we put in, I think, is maybe the bigger issue mm -hmm. is... Let's talk about that. What do you feel like a balanced or putting in good stuff that maybe we don't? Yeah, I think I will tell you, you know, like with the mineral testing, a lot of times I'm finding that people are really, really low in a lot of things. And okay. we're just not, we're not consuming enough of different vitamins and minerals that we need. And then our lifestyle in these days where we are go, 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 constantly on screens, blah, like it's stressful to our body. And so we, we burn through that stuff really quickly and then we don't, we don't refuel enough. Um, I'll say women in general too are kind of taught like the smaller you are, the better. And so we eat less and less and less until you feel terrible and you actually start to gain weight. Yeah. But <laughs> you've gone your the body is just shut down right. essentially. And we wonder why we feel so bad. And so I... I spend a lot of time getting people to eat more and eat more of certain things, and it, it tends to just crowd out the other things. I gotcha. Yeah. Are they? Are you like a um, six meal a day kind of person, or is it how many meals should we be eating? Not necessarily. It depends on the person. Do you have any tips for like <laughs> the person and like saying, okay, somebody listening right now, and they're like, yeah, all yeah. right, I eat three solid meals a day, and I don't feel great what's you know like should I eat less should I try snacking in between should you know like my sugar levels like we were talking about earlier like yeah. may spike and go down and so it probably depends I would say there's two things to look at there if they are eating enough at those meals in general okay what they're eating at the meal you know are they getting enough protein in or is it like straight carbs mm -hmm. um and then is their gut functioning too because right it's not just what we eat, it's what we digest and absorb. And so if they've got gut issues too, they could be eating the best diet in the world. It's just and cruising on through. Yeah, not, not causing. What do you think is the cause of all these gut issues that we're seeing? And, and, <sighs> what, and, leaky, yeah, and then we'll come to back and I want to know what leaky gut is. Okay. <laughs> I would say it is our diet. It is, you know, the standard American diet. It is a lot of the stuff in our food that is more like food like substance than it is real food um it is stress just chronically being in that high stress all the time um, what does stress do to our bodies <sighs> like flour, so hungry. much so much yeah <laughs> causes inflammation causes oxidative stress causes you to burn through minerals and so if you don't have minerals things can't do their job i mean they they are the we call them the spark plugs of everything in your body. And so if you don't have that, the reactions don't happen. The things don't happen. And so, yeah, stress is the annoying answer, but yeah. it's like the answer to everything. It's gotcha. just figuring out what are those stressors in your life and how do you... Do you help people walk them? through that too? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's probably a big part of it. That's a big part of it. So um, part dietitian, part therapist. Essentially. <laughs> I get so. it. I'm part therapist, part real estate guy. Yeah. I do I do have to riff her out sometimes if it's, you know, intense right. trauma, those kinds of things. I'm not your girl for that. But yeah. if it's, you know, a physical stressor, for example, is not eating enough. So can we get you eating enough? Right. And then, you know, being on your screen until midnight every night. Like can can we mitigate some, some of sleep. that stressor? And just helping people navigate, you know the world we live in that really isn't supportive of us feeling the best we can so yeah yeah it is sad that we are all stressed out i don't think that's the way it's supposed to be i don't think so either yeah. mm -mm. <laughs> what are some tips that you might give our listeners to de-stress a little bit i would say so this is something i will do with clients is i'll take them through what i call their stress journey and i have them actually like sit down and journal about all the things that have 
been stressors in their life thus far. And okay. so that's like giving birth is a big one. Um, moving and way and going to college, like getting married, those are all good things, but they are all stressful. Not everyone has, you know, like a big trauma that happened or anything, but we all have accumulated these stressors over time. And so even just taking a look at that and being like, wow, okay, my body has handled a lot for me thus far. Um, how can I support it a little bit better now? And so then it's kind of taking stock of your day to day too. Like, what are you doing that's stressful? Are you waking up and automatically getting on your phone and reading your work emails before you're even at work? Are you, you know, reading your work email on the weekend? <laughs> are you saying yes to every single extra thing possible? Or are you giving, you know, white space on your calendar? Those kind of things. Yeah, those are super helpful tips. Cause yeah. I think a lot of people do jump right on their email or stay late on their phone. and They just don't even think about it. It's automatic yeah. anymore. I yeah. heard that one on the email. I try not to look at my email until <laughs> at least 8 o'clock or so. You know, just, yeah. it's going to be all right. Like, you know? wake up, have a slow morning as best you can. It's not always easy when you are, like, a parent of little ones or any of that, getting them off to school. But mm -hmm. finding those pockets of time where you can do nothing almost yeah. is can be really helpful. Well, I think it's cool, too, you're talking about the body and how it's handled traumas or stressors over time, and you know, and it's supporting us, right? And um, it's interesting to think about the mind-body connection and mm -hmm. how your spirit's in you, and it, it's just cool. Yeah. Um, but what are some things you can do to maybe help your body heal from those traumas? I mean, do you have to identify them and then kind of let them, turn them over to the Lord, or what do you do? Yeah, so... Um, this is a lot of work that I am continuously learning about. You know, I'm not, I will refer people to more like therapists or nervous system work type people yeah. sometimes for this, but I certainly start to help my clients recognize yeah, maybe this like, stuff. Hey, maybe you uh, are high anxiety. And yes. And you're right. It is. Number one is recognizing it. Number two is like letting yourself feel whatever the emotion is around that because a lot of times we're taught to like squash that down yeah. um, and that over time truly does lead to physical issues gotcha. so it's letting yourself feel whatever that is right. um, and then learning to kind of replace it with more positive emotions um, so it's a practice for sure <laughs> yeah I think there's probably a lot of us that you know have stuff that we haven't dealt with and you need to figure out how to do that everybody does whether they think they do or not they do. right yeah <laughs> and i think a lot of it you just kind of like you said you just push it on down mm -hmm. and then it kind of disappears but it doesn't it doesn't it shows up as gut issues and ibs and hormone imbalance gotcha <laughs> there you go and so you're like oh where's this uh -huh. coming from uh -huh. <laughs> let's talk about hormone replacement hormone issues hormone therapy i don't know what yeah it is, oh. but yeah i'm not so, I mean, I don't do hormone replacement or hormone, you know, actual prescribing of hormones or any of that, but I do help people with, you know, diet, lifestyle, stress, things that help with hormones. So there's certainly, hormones really are kind of the symptom of other issues. That's how I describe it to people. A lot of people really want to get their hormones tested. They think it's their hormones, like they get blamed a lot. Right. Um, but it's usually something underlying that is ultimately causing the hormones to do what they're doing. Okay. So a good example is like women with estrogen dominance. They'll have really high estrogen levels. Okay. Well, that typically is actually coming from like gut issues or um, different changes in their diet or stress. It's not that I need to go in and fix your estrogen. It's that we need to fix all those other gotcha. things. Yeah. And so it, there's more to it than just, oh, let's test your estrogen and give you a pill for it. Um, at least that's how I'm trying to trying to handle it. Yeah. And you're probably seeing <laughs> success or you wouldn't, you're like, you're not going to keep doing it if it's not working. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what percentage of things that we're dealing with, like disease wise, do you feel like are stemming from our diets? I couldn't give you an exact percentage, but I'd say it's a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. I mean. Probably like. 70, 80 percent? At least. It's and, crazy to me to think that what we put inside our body every single day, all day, isn't going to affect our 
health. <laughs> like, it's crazy right. that anyone would we have that thought. Um, and that, you know, if you make improvements, change things, that it's not going to help you. That right. That's wild to me. Um, I know there's a, there's a longstanding, like, thought process that what you eat doesn't affect your acne or your, your skin. And that is just... Totally wrong. It just blows my mind. <laughs> like, it, it affects it so much. It's, it's what you're doing all day long, every day. You have to eat to live. And yeah. so, of course, it's going to affect all of that. What are some high like acne-causing foods that we shouldn't be eating? I would say, like inflammatory foods. So acne can be root from inflammation, especially inflammation in the gut. So things that are more inflammatory are like, um, they call them PUFAs, polyunsaturated fats. So like canola oil, all the things that all your, French fries, like fried oh, food. Um, you can fry foods in other oils, but mm -hmm. a lot of restaurants and things are using those oils. It's They're the cheaper. cheapest. Yeah. Um, you know, all the food coloring, just random things that your liver has to filter out. Um, a lot of acne stems from a bogged down liver. I would say a lot of hormone issues do too. Hmm. Um, and so things that your liver has to filter out, like food coloring and uh, random stuff. And that, it's not to say you can't ever have those things, but just in moderation and understanding how they affect you and knowing that you also need all the good stuff too. Right. So. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some good foods for acne. Okay. Because um, you're going to get me off of the yeah. Doritos and the fries, <laughs> and then I'm going to start eating these things, and it's going to help my All skin. right. So the opposite. So like anti-inflammatory foods, lots of things with good omega-3s are really important. Vitamin A is extremely important for skin health. So um, contrary to what a lot of people have been taught, that we should stay away from more of the saturated fat foods, that's really where we get most of our vitamin A. So mm. beef, egg yolks, butter, whole fat dairy, <laughs> all the things that you've probably been told not to eat. So that's really important for skin health. I would say polyphenols too. So like lots of dark, colorful fruits and vegetables, berries, that's going to be helpful. Um, those are the biggies. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So what what are some of the other things that you're dealing with through nutrition that would benefit our listeners? Hmm. <laughs> Just daily. I mean, I think probably energy levels, right? Yeah. I mean, like, if you want a lot of energy, you need to eat good stuff on the regular. Yes, for sure. Actually, I had a discussion earlier today about how, um, and then this is a lot of my clients. They come in and they're like, I want to exercise. I want to do things with my family. But I get home from work and it is... Like, I'm exhausted. I can mm -hmm. barely get through making dinner, and I have to lay on the couch and do nothing. Yeah. Uh, but they're not eating. They're skipping breakfast. They're eating a salad for lunch, and then they're maybe eating a more normal dinner, maybe a small dinner. Mm -hmm. And you can't – like, food is our fuel. We, right. ha we have to be eating enough. Um, and I think there's a big misconception that, you know, you eat less, you lose weight, you eat more, you gain weight. And yeah. that is just, just not true. We, <laughs> we just know it. Not to be true anymore. Well, like, I've, yeah, because I learned that it's just pretty easy math, right? You know, yeah. if I go to the gym and I burn a thousand calories and then I only eat, you know, say 500 that day, uh -huh. I'm in a 500 deficit. I do that for what, seven times? That's a pound, like 3,500 calories equals a pound. Right. So then I'm down a pound. And you should lose weight, right? I should yeah. lose weight. Yeah. Ultimately. Ultimate. But we're not like math, it's math equations. Simple math. <laughs> we're not math equations. We're not math equations. And I will say it tends to be. A little bit easier for men. Your hormones just don't fluctuate, cause you as many issues as it does for women. Our bodies are a little more sensitive to things that cause it stress, mm -hmm. like a calorie deficit. Yeah. Um, and it'll work a few times throughout. A lot of women are like, I've done it before and it worked. And I'm like, well, it didn't work if you've gained your now weight, all back. Your weight right. back. Right. It, it, did it really work? Right. Um, and so really it, it's about communicating that safety to the body. Mm -hmm. um, and doing, you know, for weight loss, maybe tiny calorie deficits or none at all. Sometimes it's just your body needs to feel safe again yeah. and things start working again and you're able to. That's an interesting term loss, for so. you to think about food and your body feeling safe. Mm -hmm. Like talk more about that. <laughs> um, that's something I, I use that analogy a lot. I just think that people conceptualize it pretty well, like how to help your body feel safe. What are the things that it needs? It needs food. It needs water, it needs sunlight, it needs sleep, 
it needs to have fun. <laughs> um, is that so, fun? Let's go ride some roller coasters. Yeah. So if you kind of strip it down to the basics and cut away all the, well, count, count your macros and do it like this and you have to, I don't know, drink um, a gallon of water every day. Like just all the little rules people have decided my to My coach is with. like, he's <laughs> ridiculous. He weighs his food. He has uh -huh. a thousand supplements he takes, but he's like probably the healthiest dude I know. See, I want, I want you to be able to just listen. To, I want your body to tell you what it needs yeah. ultimately. And we've gotten so far away from that. Right. Um, but it takes a little bit to get there. But eventually, hopefully you're just, living your life it's not the only thing on your mind all the time yeah. and you can feel good <laughs> what do you think about i think a lot of us are eating out a lot more mm -hmm. what are some healthy choices you can make while you're eating out because it question. seems like we all have we're all stressed we don't have time yeah. to do anything we, except drive through somewhere so I know, give right? us some give I us some know. drive through tips and tricks. So my best tip in that scenario is to still make sure you're getting enough protein. So this is what I tell a lot of people when they're like going on vacations or it's just a, a stressful week and they know they're going to need to door dash or whatever. Right. Um, make sure you're getting a good amount of protein. And so for most people, that's at least 30 grams in that meal. I would say for men a little bit more. Okay. Um, and make sure you're getting a vegetable. And what so are good sources of, of that protein? Like through... So through the drive-thru. Oh, I, I mean, know. you're like, oh, she's just like, wait. In a, a drive-thru? It's going to be I mean, hard. you're working with what you got, ultimately. Right. But if if you can do, you know, the grilled chicken or even the burger, like that, ground beef is a great great source of protein. Um, yes, we're getting back to burgers. Yes. I would say at least, you know, getting that protein is yeah. the biggest thing so maybe throw the bun out the window let the birds eat yeah choose your carb there so that's what i tell people is like if you're if you love french fries get like a small french fry and yeah maybe throw the top off of the bun just not too many carbohydrates at once okay um because that's where you get the blood sugar gotcha. stuff mm -hmm. and you start to crash a few hours later and feel terrible. Right. Um, so really, really it's about balancing your blood sugar ultimately at that point. So you're, you're trying not to do too many carbs at once and make sure you have protein. Okay. And that's going to help, help with that. Okay. So not too many carbs, lots of protein. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be all right. You're going to feel better. Yeah. And then that's going to compound over time and you're going to feel better and better and you're going to start cooking your own food. What would be Hopefully. some things at home, <laughs> right? What are some good meals at home that you'd like to encourage people to cook or do that are like well balanced? Just yeah, because I think we're all getting we're we're getting away from like I remember my mom every night dinner was on the table mm -hmm. and we had a garden. She would pick stuff out of our garden and eat it. You know, like we yeah. had a lot of fresh vegetables, yeah. that kind of stuff. I didn't like my Brussels sprouts. Sorry, mom. <laughs> but you know, I would sit there and eat it all, and I felt good. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And so, what are some? I think we're getting away from that now because we're we more urban society and we just we're on the go all the time right right um and i think the ultimate goal this is what i tell people if you can could you know if you had the tools and the knowledge if you could grow it in your backyard or raise it in your backyard or cook it make it in your kitchen mm -hmm. it's probably a good option gotcha if it's got stuff in it or ingredients in it that were made in a factory have to be made in a factory or you know man-made essentially mm -hmm. maybe steer away from that a little bit more so okay. trying to get back to more of those whole foods and yes sometimes that does take a little bit more cooking you do have to know a little bit about that to not just like open a box and mix it with water but um if you can get a whole fruit and vegetable and a chicken breast or even a steak whatever it is and cook that that's going to be better than no, I grew up on a lot of hamburger helper. Love yeah. my mom, but <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I get it. I, and that's you know, there are a lot of that's all I can get to get. Yeah, <laughs> excuse me, got, <laughs> got choked up. Um, let's talk about supplements. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think those are getting to be bigger and bigger. It's a billion dollar industry. It's the wild, wild west. Yeah. So talk about supplements. <laughs> like if you're a beginner getting into it, like how do you figure out? The, I'm sure you help maybe walk through people. Mm -hmm. People through that. Mm -hmm. And my friend Emmett wanted to talk about uh, methylated vitamins. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. we can talk about that too. <laughs> so I certainly utilize supplements 
in my practice, like take them myself. My viewpoint of that and what I love about the testing is that we can get those tests back and we know what you need right. instead of taking a random cocktail of things and not really knowing if it's working or not. That's the one of the things I hear back from clients a lot is they're like, oh, this is actually helping. Like I feel different on or off these supplements. And it's because we, we test it and we know what their body needs versus the next person. Yeah, It's going to be completely different. And so a lot of people take random multivitamins. Um, Would you better. suggest a multivitamin or no? A lot of times I don't. Okay. Ultimately, um, they have a lot of synthetic ingredients that don't always work in your body the way that the true vitamin does. Okay. Um, or they're just weird ratios of yeah. those vitamins and minerals. Because they're all different. You yeah. know, you've got 5,000% of this one and 10% of... Exactly. And it can actually throw stuff off. So if you're right. taking like a mega dose of vitamin D, it can cause your vitamin A to decrease. Hmm. So you, you've got to know what you're doing and be a little careful there um, instead of just taking anything. And that's why I call it the wild, wild west because they're they're available. Anyone can just buy these things. I can go to Sam's There's, and buy 4 million vitamins tonight. There is no oversight on them. Yeah. No one checks that what's in them is what's in them. Which is crazy. Which is just wild to me. It can literally be sawdust. What if they're like certified <laughs> organic version? Like we like yeah, the My yeah. Kind brand. Um, there's, there's good there's brands out there for sure. Yeah. Um, I would say one thing most people across the board need is more magnesium. Oh, yeah. Um, Carly was good, talking about that one. the other day that helps her sleep, too. Yeah. 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 Magnesium is a good one. Where if you ever have muscle cramps or just tight muscles, can be magnesium. Um, helps with digestion. It helps with sleep. It, it's, it's a good one. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you see for the future of your company? You're renourished. What do you want it to accomplish? And That's how do you want to? I just want to help as many people as possible. Isn't that just fun? <laughs> I was listening to a podcast today about a guy who um, wrote a book called Remarkable. And it's just, he was, he was a neat dude. Anyway, um, he was saying that the pursuit of happiness is unattainable, basically. But by helping people, that's when you're truly happy because you're doing something for someone else. And you're, that's what we're created to do. We're created to love each other, take care of each other. And that brings true happiness. Yeah, and so yeah. I think that's great. We couldn't do it without each other. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, too, <laughs> Yeah, it would be bad if you're just all by yourself uh -huh, all the time. Uh -huh. I think that's yeah. not the way the Lord made it. So. so, yep. I would love to just continue helping more and more people. I'd love to hire more dietitians, help them, give mm -hmm. them careers that are meaningful to them. And Is there a big people. online contingency of dietitians like you in this business? I think there's a good amount online. Okay. Um, in our area here, there's very few. Okay. I would say, like, when I was working in the hospital trying to find outpatient referrals for people because that's just not the time and the place for diet education. Um, I couldn't find anyone. Like there's very few outpatient dietitians in our area. So yeah, we, it's needed. <laughs> yeah. I think talk to um, the listeners about dietitians and what they do at hospitals and that kind of thing too. Cause I think that a lot of people don't maybe have a good view yeah, of that. Yeah. So I worked in a hospital here. I actually worked at Holston Valley in Kingsport oh, for cool. about a year and a half. Yeah. Um, and I've worked in various different nursing homes in the area. And I think, I think there is a common misconception that we are going to come and give you lots of diet education and change your life, or that we. The big one is that we have a lot of control over what's fed to the patients yeah, in the hospital. Yeah, I thought that was the key. Zero control really? over that. <laughs> really. It's just coming from the cafeteria, no matter what. It's but, um, more like corporate level. There is a dietitian involved somewhere in that step, but it's not, not the people in the hospital. Um, and it, it's just, it, it's a really difficult time to come and provide any education. If someone who is sick, sick in the right. hospital, they're, they're not feeling mode. well, they're tired, they're on met different medications. Like that's typically not the role. It's spend a lot of time making sure people eat enough food in general because they're sick and not feeling good and getting calories of any kind will help them feel better. Yeah. Um, and what I specifically did actually was work in the ICU. I did more so like tube feeding and IV nutrition oh, for wow. people who are like on ventilators and stuff. So um, it's a very different world. 
than, yeah. what, than what I'm doing now. So yeah, uh, still, still interesting, still very necessary and helpful, but just different. And so you were doing that and you're like, this isn't for me. Like I yeah. want to go out on my own. I just wanted to help more people on the front end, help prevent them from being in the ICU at the hospital, you know, <laughs> um, get people feeling better earlier on in life instead of, you know, having this low quality of life and then getting to the point where you are so sick that you're yeah, in and out of the hospital. My mind goes to, is it possible? I mean, like there's trillions of dollars that go into marketing mm -hmm. Coke and McDonald's mm -hmm. and Subway and, you know, all the different things out there, right, that we want to eat and that are bad for us. Mm -hmm. And then so you're fighting that and then because you and it's easy and you can drive through and get it. And mm -hmm. so but then on the other side of it, we're like, oh, we don't feel great and we're not as productive as a country and we're not as right. healthy as a country. And and then there's this other, you know, big gorilla, the pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. that would be like, oh, no, you need to keep doing that because we can give you a pill that will make that feeling go away for a little while. Mm -hmm. But it may you may get an extra toe. I've got another <laughs> sub company over here that has a pill that gets really extra toe. So you take care of that yeah. one, you know. And there, like, there's a pill for all of it. It's like a just this. <laughs> It's like a huge cycle that it's going to be hard to break, right? And so Sometimes, maybe just grassroots, like you're teaching people to feel better and we teach each other to feel better after. I mean, is that kind yeah, of your thought yeah. on Yeah, I mean, I there's days where I feel like there's all kinds of people doing what I do out there and like the market's super saturated and then I take a step, step back and I'm like, there's not nearly enough. Like we're we're just scratching the surface and... There's days I feel hopeless about it, but we're getting there, I think. I think we are getting there. Um, you just can't let yourself get bullied by the big... <laughs> the big guys, yep. yeah. It is scary, I mean, to think about, because I, I hope I'm wrong, but I think there is a big system there that's like just churning it and like going, yep, we're making yeah. money and we're, we're yep. going to keep rolling. And the there is. But I think there's more and more people waking up to the fact that something's not working there. Yeah. Something's not right, and there are other things we can do. And I, I find that more and more people are willing to look through, for alternative routes. Um, so we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, I think it is a battle. I, I watched those, and somebody was telling me one of their friends came from over from Europe, and they were watching TV, and they were like, "What is the deal with all these pharmaceutical like commercials? Like we don't have any of them in the UK, mm -hmm. you know?" and and then you're like, this will, you know, fix your, I don't know, toenail or whatever. <laughs> I got stuck on toes for some reason. But um, but then the like the side effect thing is like uh -huh. 10 minutes long uh -huh. afterwards. And you're like, and why would fine. you even take that? I, I don't know. I don't know either. But it's that's, easy, I guess. That's what I'm trying to help people get away from as best we can. You know, and that, it's not to say that there aren't isn't a time and place. Yeah. For medication, certainly. Oh, I, for sure. There's like, times there's I'm people. sending people and saying, hey. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. Go I'm talk not to on record about, about <laughs> like, I think there's some pharmaceuticals that are life saving and yes, unbelievably sure. created. And, you know, there's a ton of good there, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. But I think we've we gotten just, a little, a little too far. We, we need the, the daily support with it, too. And I find people are craving that. They want that. They want to be, you know, a support from their doctor. And yes, I need to take this medication, but what else can I do? And they often find that they're not given a whole lot of information, right. but that's that's a different person's job. That's my job. So yeah. you just have to find the right person to help you with what you're looking for, I think, when it comes to that. Do you have a website? I do. On this website, do you have like general information for people who are just like, or like videos maybe you're talking about, hey, this is the first step to getting healthy and and then if you want to get deeper, is yeah. that stuff you have on there? Or tell us so, about what you're... I actually, I just recently created this. I have a free 5J challenge on my website. So you can go sign up and you'll just get five days of one email that has some videos and some information of what I feel like are the top five habits that will improve your health. Oh, cool. Um, super simple things that maybe don't seem life-changing, but if you, with consistency over weeks and months, they're the things that 
that matter, kind of those foundation things, mm -hmm. um, ultimately that I would love to see everyone doing. Yeah. So that's a great place to start and that is on my website. Um, and then there's, there's just other information on there about what working with me as a client looks like. Um, what does that look like for people? So I actually use a program model. So it is a four month program and the lab testing we were talking about all of that is included and so you come to me and it's it's a one-stop shop and you don't get to just do one appointment and leave you, you gotta you're locked in yes you gotta commit and that that is what gets you results that's what gets you to the other side because it's so easy to give up um especially you know when I'm asking you to make diet and lifestyle changes, those I think are you're, some of the hardest things to You're trying to create to new habits and it's <laughs> yeah. extremely hard with food, It can be hard, food, it can be hard. Sure. So um, I set it up that way so that people actually get to the other side and start to feel better. That's um, cool. So that's, that's really the, the gist of how it's set up. Um, yeah. How do they find you online? Uh, my website is renourishedco.com. Okay. Super easy. I am also pretty active on Instagram um, and Facebook. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Same re renourished code. That one is nutrition with Cali. All nutrition. my handles are at nutrition with Cali. Um, I try to do TikTok a little bit. I'm, I'm in my thirties. It's not my, <laughs> I'm with you. The TikTok is, it's a, it's a little, you know, and then you worry about China stealing all your data. So. Yeah. So, who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So what, um, what are some fun things you and your husband like to do in Johnson City for some of our listeners learning more about JC? Great question. We just love Johnson City. We love to, recently, last summer we bought kayaks and we have been kayaking the Watauga River nice. and trout fishing. He trout fishes. I sit there with a pole. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't catch anything. He's um, over there like reeling it in. like Very rarely. Uh, gotcha. But I do like the kayaking. Um, we have a dog. So we like to, we spend a lot of time at Off Leash so Dog so, Park. Yeah. Um, he was on the podcast a few, about a year ago. Were they? Yeah. 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 So we go there a lot. She hangs what out, kind of runs around. Have? She's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My friend uh, Brian Dawson has one of those. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's She's awesome. Spoiled little brat. But um <laughs> But if you don't have kids, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, where do you guys like to go to dinner? This is a good, tough one because you're a nutritionist. So. I know, right? Oh, our one we frequent a lot is probably Label, which is okay. pro probably a pretty common response. Yeah, that's a good um, one. We love Label. We love Main Street Pizza. Um, and you know what we get a lot is pho from The Roots. Yeah. Which is not downtown. But no, we, yes. We love their pho. It's real good. <laughs> They're great. We helped them buy a house in Greece probably five or ten years ago. Now. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're really sweet. I like them. Um, what are you um, currently excited about in your in your business that's just really like, you're like, hey, this is going to take off. I'm excited. Oh. Your new videos and stuff, your five-day challenge. I mean, yeah, that is exciting. I hope it helps people because yeah. I think. I just hear a lot of times, like, I just don't even know where to start. Yeah. I think that's the overwhelming <laughs> yeah. response, probably. There's just, there's too much information, and let, at the same time, there's no helpful information. Like, I just don't know where to, that's why I don't know where to start. So I was like, well, I'm going to give people a place to start. <laughs> so. I love it. Yeah. And then how, we haven't talked about, like, that is just one part of your life, right? And mm -hmm. then so, what about exercise? Are you an exercise fan? I am, yes. It's good. <laughs> yes. How much should we be exercising a week? Oh, it dep again, it depends on the person. It's such a, I hate that answer, but it depends on the person. I will have a lot of people who are just like little stress balls and they're going to boot camp classes five days a week at 5 a.m. and not sleeping. And so we actually get them to dial it back. Gotcha. Um, I have a lot of, like if they come in running marathons, like we have to dial that back and actually be working out less. You don't think um, maybe the marathon's the best thing to do? Maybe like once okay. in your life. In your know. life. Um, and then that's a trauma you got to deal I, with. I personally <laughs> Your body's like, running, so. you, didn't, you didn't keep me safe there yeah, no. running 27.2 miles. That's not, yeah, that's a stressor for sure. Gotcha. Um, so it just depends. But yes, movement in general, like getting more movement, more walking, outside ideally if you can yeah. that's a biggie um 
something I'm How good is sunlight for us? So good for us. I mean, it's like awesome. Yes. Yes. I mean, don't like get sunburns fried in the sun all day long, but people, we were not made to live in wooden boxes. We were made to be outside yeah. and we don't get nearly enough sunlight. That throws all kinds of things off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about water? How much water should we be drinking, Callie? Half your body weight in ounces. That one I have a good answer for. <laughs> that was, but you were you're like right on the money there. I like it. Easy. <laughs> Easy peasy. Keep them coming. Let's talk about sleeping. How often, how many hours typically should we sleep? I know everybody's different. Yeah, typically seven to nine is a good place to be trying, trying yeah. to get. Um, there's people who say they thrive on a little bit more. People who say they're fine on less. So I don't know if I believe that one as much, yeah. but. I think I get it five-ish, so. Finish. I'm getting about seven. Yeah, yeah, it's good. good. Six and a half, six, somewhere <laughs> in there. Um, and then what are some other things for our bodies? That, like just so, what, so you got exercise, we're eating right, mm -hmm. we're sleeping, we're hydrating. Any, and then we talked about supplements a little bit. Anything else? It's like, I mean, we've probably got mind stuff, right? Meditation, yeah. prayer, yeah. that kind of thing. I would say that's where the like de-stressing and and the fun comes in. So like leaving that white space on your calendar. Um, yeah, you and, mentioned that earlier. What would getting, you do during like a, I've got two hours of nothing to do? Go outside <laughs> and get some sunlight. Yeah. Um, really trying, I think, a big piece of it is getting out of your head too. Okay. So I talk with clients about this a lot. I'm like, even if you're, you don't have kids, you work from home, like for all intents and purposes, your life seems easy, not stressful. If you are stressing about, your body image or your skin or your relationship or whatever it is in your head 24 mm -hmm. 7 your body thinks you are just as stressed as if you were running a marathon so it working on that that is important too gotcha. for sure so thinking about the things that are causing stress and your things you're continually thinking about are probably yeah those yep. are things you should write down and deal with <laughs> yes, yes gotcha okay <laughs> Well, do you have any other tips for us besides the ones we've already gone over? Anything else that I didn't ask you maybe that I should have? I'm sure there's tons of things, but it, again, can be so individualized. So. Do you feel like <laughs> everybody should talk to a nutritionist at some point? Probably. Right. I'm I mean, obviously like, biased, but... What if we like started in <laughs> schools and said, okay, everybody, yeah. we're going to meet, you're, like a counselor, yeah. you're going to meet with a the counselor, then you're going to meet with Callie. I think it is a little crazy that this thing that we have to do every day in order to live and affects us so much, we know so little about. Right. We're taught so little. I mean, I know they've, they've switched it up since I was in school, but you teach you about like the my plate or the food pyramid in the fifth grade. There's a food pyramid. And that's about it. Yeah. Um, there's no updated anything and we're just supposed to figure it out. And it's something that we have to do all day, every day, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so you're thinking we need to go back and really revamp the whole uh, education system re around. the whole thing. Re yeah. Okay, well, maybe in a year you can come back on the podcast. <laughs> tell us how you've revamped all that. That would be great because that would be awesome. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, and then shut down some of the big, big bad companies out know. there. <laughs> um, anybody... Like, let's say somebody else is listening that might want to start a career in nutrition. How mm -hmm. would you encourage them to do it? Because yeah. we need more, it sounds like, if everybody's got to we meet do. with one. We do. Like and 4 million. Lately, I heard that enrollment in colleges for it is down. I would say um, they actually recently changed the requirements that you have to have a master's degree to become a dietitian. So that has steered a lot of people away. It scared them off. Um, and then salary maybe isn't the yeah, best either. So that's a little... Um, I kind of wonder if that's... A little sub, subversive, you know, like they're saying, hey, if we don't pay them much, they won't do that, and then they won't fight against us. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Just throwing that know. out there as Part a theory. Of it, but I would say, you know, get through it. Go through the schooling. It's still worth it. Still become a dietitian versus a nutritionist because yeah. it is different. Okay. You are able to do a lot more as a dietitian. Um, and then you can do what you want, ultimately. There you go. Then you can start your own practice. And... I think to some degree, there's a lot more dietitians out there now hiring other dietitians to do this work yeah. too, um, and kind of making our own jobs out of it. And so I would say just stick with it, even though it kind of isn't the best at first. Gotcha. <laughs> but maybe you can become a part of 
renourish co yeah and like have this huge group of online nutritionists that are helping out That's millions so cool. of people every year could be that that would be amazing wouldn't that be great <laughs> last question what gets you fired up like let's go oh, everything we've been talking about yes nutrition <laughs> i can <laughs> i can feel it going out on a kayak with your ridge back and your husband and catching a big trout that, that sounds, too that, that gets you fired up <laughs> Um, well, thank you so much for coming yeah. on the podcast. It was great of connecting course. with you. I'm hoping our listeners all reach out to you. Take the five-day challenge. Watch your videos. Yes. Get some free tips. And then maybe even engage with you for four months. Yes, that would be wonderful. That sounds like <laughs> fun. And I, you know, and I think it would be a game changer because we're trying to create habits. And I've read it takes at least, uh, it's like 121 days. It's like 360 day cycle or 333 day cycles that's what it is uh -huh. so and you can have a break here and there but not much and so like if you're saying okay i'm gonna replace coffee i'm drinking coffee with a smoothie mm -hmm. and you just take it over and like oh, okay now it's so easy to make the smoothie and do it that it's like i don't even think about the coffee yeah. anymore you just brush your teeth in the morning right you don't need to think about it yep. yeah that's yep. another one habit stack like if you're trying to yep. take vitamins or whatever takes, just habit stack it take some some time but you you can get there. You can get there. All right. Well, <laughs> Carly and I talk about this stuff all the time, and I, I think it's um, it's great what you're doing. So thank, thank you, you so much. We wish you the best. Thank you. Come back to the podcast. Update us on how your business is doing in a couple of years. I'd love to. Yeah. And, <laughs> and until next time, I'm Colin Johnson of the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you want to move here and eat all kinds of great, healthy stuff, we've got lots of beautiful land here to grow it on. <laughs> We have lots of greenery. We have wonderful sun. It's just an awesome place to live. So I'd love to help you move here, buy a house, invest in real estate. If you guys want to invest in real estate, let me know. We do a lot of property management too. So thanks for listening. Until next week, I'm Colin Johnson. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much.